I just want to do a quick rundown of all the different pieces of gear to hopefully help out some new people that are trying to learn about what gear they need to bring with you for a portable operation or parks on the air activation. So I got my um, 50 feet of coax. This is RG8X coax from uh, ABR Industries. I definitely think it's worth it to buy quality coax because I started out initially with some uh, very cheap coax and um, one of the connectors broke off after uh, about five or six uses. And I've used this ABR Industries coax for probably about 30 plus activations so far and it has served me very well. I love that it's super flexible. It's very easy to coil up and doesn't really fight you. I also have this uh, current choke what this does is this plugs into the bottom of my antenna and it prevents my, my coax feed line from radiating and becoming an extension of the antenna. This just prevents my signal from coming back into the feed line and make, basically makes my signal more efficient and also can slightly reduce noise. So that's what this little winding is here. That's gonna plug into the end of my coax. It'll plug into here. And then for power, I'm using this uh, 20 amp hour BioEno battery. This thing will give me roughly four to five hours of runtime. That's what I've used so far with this setup, with this ICOM 706. It's worth investing in a high quality battery and making sure that you have fuses on your connector. Fuses are very important to make sure your radio doesn't explode. Um, that's just my simple power connector. And then of course, my favorite radio so far, my ICOM 706 Mark II Golf. This thing is a tank. I also 3D printed a speaker cover and I had some extra magnets lying around. I glued these magnets onto the bottom here. And the speaker, as you can see, is right here. It kind of deflects the sound that way, which isn't that ideal, especially if you can hear all these bugs around me. It can get kind of noisy or with road traffic. This just clicks on right there. It's not really going anywhere. It's not gonna blow away in the wind. And that helps direct the audio to my ears so that I can hear everyone better because I don't have headphones that have a mic on them yet. Moving along to the antenna, we've got this chameleon 25 foot telescopic whip. Pretty impressive. This whole thing, that's roughly two feet, extends all the way up to 25 feet to get me on a 10 meters all the way through 40 meters. And these are the linked radials that I made that I'm going to be connecting to the antenna that will give me better performance. And just some uh, PVC piping that I cut in half and have a little connector here in the middle just to make it more portable in my car. So it's not one massive piece. I can just kind of break it up into two and to connect the antenna is just a probably $15 um, Amazon, some mirror mount adapter that's meant for mirrors or on your truck CB radio stuff. But hey, this looks perfect to clamp onto this PVC pipe and it's going nowhere. To stick it into the ground, I have this, what's this called? Well, it's just a big piece of metal. It's a big stake with uh, some threads in the top which I got corresponding threads. I don't know the thread count off the top of my head, but I basically stake this into the ground, not with this attached. And once this is staked in the ground, I can screw this piece on and then attach the rest of the antenna onto there. And then lastly, these big pieces of plastic are just a plastic step-on stakes from Tractor Supply. These are like $2.50 each. Really awesome, long stake to step on. It's what I'm going to use to connect these radials to so that they're above the ground so that the antenna is more efficient compared to laying your radials directly on the ground. There's a couple more goodies that I have just extra in this Gregory bag that I bring with me to all my activations to carry my stuff. Lots of other miscellaneous wires and cables and stakes and accessories in there. But if you'd like any more information or details on any of this, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll try to respond back to you as soon as possible. And if you want longer form content, let me know. I'm trying to figure out what kind of videos to make that everyone likes to watch.
All right, now that you've got a brief overview of my gear setup for this Parks on the Air portable activation, I'm gonna take everything and try my best to explain how I set it all up. Let's do it. And now my antenna, screw that on there. I'm gonna unwind these guys. This is very exciting. And at the very end, it's just a little Mueller clip that I used to clamp onto the base of the antenna. With these raised radials, depending on where I position them or where I angle them, it's actually gonna give me directional gain. So right now, since I'm here in the Midwest in Northwest Ohio, there's a lot more population to the West, which is this direction. So if I angle these radials at a 90 degree orientation, it'll give me a couple of extra dB of gain. Extra gain essentially is more power. So I'm gonna point these roughly due West and hopefully get some West Coast contacts, maybe California, that'd be cool. All right, so now with the antenna set up, you can see that I have all these links, these little junction points on right here. So I put a little bead when I was soldering these together. This is six, and there's a jumper right there. 10 for 10 meters. This is 13, I forgot to put a bead there. <laughs> 15 meters. 17 and 20. So right now the antenna is set up for 20 meters. Since I want to work on 10, I gotta take this jumper off, but now this jumper has been disconnected and I'm gonna set this on the ground, find my 10 meter junction. Just hold this down with my foot here. Sorry, this is really difficult to do one-handed. I'm gonna pop that off and then place this jumper with the jumper installed, you can see that it stops right at 10 meters. Electricity passing through this wire stops right here at the plastic. So if this part of the antenna and going backward is essentially invisible to the antenna. So now this thing is set up for 10 meters. Well, almost set up. I have to do the same thing to this other raised radial, and then I'm going to raise up the vertical whip. So now that I have everything set up, Let's try it out. <laughs> Let's see if it works. Kilo, Foxtrot 8, Charlie, November, Kilo, park to park. Kilo, Foxtrot 8, Charlie, we, November, Kilo, is that correct? QSL, QSL, Kilo, Foxtrot 8, Charlie, November, Kilo, you're a 5 and 5, 55 into my park, 1975, QSL. You are 555 five, five, from Santiago de Chile. My name is Pablo, activating Park Charlie Lima 0226 and Charlie Lima 0226. Thank you very much for your contact. Uh, QSL. QSL, copy the 5 and 5 into Charlie Lima 0225 and 0226. QSL. QSL, thank you very much. Good, good, good DX. 73, good DX. Thanks for my first contact of the day. 73. 73. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's not too bad for the first contact. I'm really stoked on that. Um, so right now, I got him in the log. His name's Pablo, and he's also doing Parks on the Air. Not in America. Parks on the Air isn't just in America. That's what I thought it was when I first got into it. Um, he's in Chile, 5,241 miles away from here. So now that is my current location here at the park. And all the way <laughs> down here in Chile, Chile, however you want to say it, made a contact all the way down there. And that's not even the direction I have this, um, these radials pointed. I'm pointed more west. And I was still able to contact him even though I'm not necessarily pointed in that direction. And that's what's great about a vertical antenna is sure I have a little bit more gain based off how I have these radials set up, but since it is a vertical antenna, it's pretty much omnidirectional. So my signal is going to radiate out kind of like a big balloon or a big donut, just going outward like that. That's really awesome. First contact of the day, I will gladly take that. And now let's go back to my spotting page and see who else I can find. Kilo, Foxtrot 8, Charlie, November, Kilo, park to park. Okay, station Kilo, Foxtrot 8, Charlie, November, Kilo. QSL, QSL, Kilo, Foxtrot 8, Charlie, November, Kilo, park to park. Thank you for the contact, Kilo, Foxtrot 8, Charlie, November, Kilo. 
QSL, you are a five and two, 52 into my park, one niner, seven, five. Repeat, one niner, seven, five. QSL? Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for the contact. Kilo Doctor A, Charlie November, Kilo Zero Four Five Five for doing in Mexico. My part is my X-ray zero four four six. Troyer. QSL Mike X-ray zero four four six, and I copy the five and five. Thanks for the park to park and seven three. Thank you. Enjoy the park. Seventy three and eighty eight. This is X-ray Echo One Delta Colima. Thank you, Bota. Thank you, Oh, that's so cool. So 10 meters is doing great right now. That's a uh, Mexico. Um, it's a five and five signal report both ways. Let me open up the map there. Awesome. Cool, two DX contacts for first start. I'm in no rush. It's only five o'clock right now. Got plenty of daylight, got plenty of battery life. So I'm just gonna hang out and see what else I can find. So I ended up staying at the park for a little over two hours, racking up 61 unique QSOs across five different bands. This is the most bands that I've ever worked at a single park. Five and three, right back at you. Thanks for the new band, and uh, thanks for the park to park, seven three. Well, yeah, same park there, US 1975. What about Carter, 73? Seven three. Seven three. Seven three. Seven three. Seven three. Seven three. All right, so that's pretty much how I set everything up for a Parks on the Air activation with my ICOM 706 and one of my favorite antennas as of right now, the POTA Performer. Right now I'm planning to do my very first Morse code activation. I've been studying CW a lot lately and it's been a new obsession of mine. So make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more stuff like that. Thanks so much for watching again and 73.